Hey everybody, Sold and Shine Ola here, SOS. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking where I've been, why I'm not doing Thoughts for the Weekend, or just haven't been seen around too much or heard from much in the last uh, few weeks or so. I guess the short of it is I'm just kind of, uh, not burnt out, but I'm just considering a shift in what it is I'm doing. One of the things that I've always wanted to do is just make sure that I'm doing whatever it is that I want to do. I'm not dictated by any situation or any person as far as what it is that I do. I try to not pigeonhole myself into anything. And, you know, I've enjoyed doing, you know, Thoughts for the Weekend, PNN News, and other such videos over the past year. I'm kind of at a point right now where looking at things that are going on, I laughed that I was joking the other week of taking the blue pill and just going back to sleep and just pretending like, you know what? Everything's great, the government's right, we're in a recovery, and there's nothing to worry about anymore. We're all saved. But, you know, I can't do that because once you open your eyes, once you open your eyes to what's going on around us and in this country, you realize that there's there's no way to go back to sleep as much as I would want to. You just can't go back to sleep. You can't close your eyes. You can't pretend like the boogeyman's not there. The boogeyman being the incredible national debt, both what they report and the, uh, the numbers they don't report, and you realize that we're going to crash. It's just, it's not a matter of if. It's not even really a matter of when. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen probably soon. There's debate going on. People have asked, well, when do you think it's going to go? And I honestly don't know how we can make it another year. It seems like they'll do this bipartisan bickering back and forth and just kind of string things along a little bit, both sides hoping that, depending on what happens at the election, that the other side will be either to blame or be the savior. And what these politicians fail to realize time and time again is that they have no answers. They have no solutions. All they have is their egos and their desire to have power and control over our lives in every way possible. Both sides, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. You know, I got a um, PM from my buddy Pete, Ches Critta now, formerly PD Lumina. And, uh, you know, he's working on something. I kind of want to work with him on it, too, even though I'm kind of far away and i got to put a little more effort into planning it. So I want to help him out with that silent march on the capital of California, Sacramento. You know, rather than doing what the Occupy people do, which is just, you know, trash a place and piss people off and really just, they garner no respect for what they're doing, in my opinion. I'll stress, in my opinion. You might have a different opinion. That's great. Make a video about it. You know, going around and camping out in in the parks there in the cities and trashing the place, leaving your waste everywhere, and just basically making the people that have to live and work around that area look at you in disgust. That's never going to get your point across. Corey's kind of right when he says that, you know, going to the ballot box doesn't solve anything, and so there's no point of voting. Well, I do disagree with Corey a little bit there. Do I think my vote counts? No. But I do look at it as it's my duty. Whether it changes anything, whether it makes a difference, whether it just props up the current system or not, that's regardless of the fact that that is something that I, I just believe in doing. Um, you know, I work at the elections, I work the precincts on election day. It's just something I like to do, you know, participate as much as I can. Whether it's having any effect or not, you know, I, I look at it as outreach. I spend a lot of time talking to the people that come to vote, talking with people that are also volunteering, and just helping spread the word and try to get people to understand that, you know, you're not going to win anything if you get 16% of the population to show up. You can say that voting doesn't matter and withhold your vote, but when it comes down to it, and the election's done, and you get, say, a 20% turnout, you just let 20 people decide for you. And it's usually the 20% that's straight off their rocker, just bug-eye crazy, one way or the other. And it's just a crapshoot on which side's going to elect their crazy person in. And that's the thing. I mean, this was a the primary election. Now, granted, it's California, and our primary is long after the other states. But, you know, the turnout in a lot of the other states wasn't that high either. So you wonder why we get stuck with such a lousy choice in Mitt Romney going against Barack Obama. It's because you don't get enough people out there participating, especially in the early primaries, to be able to get candidates that you feel might actually represent you. No one candidate is going to represent you 100% the way you want. None. You're never going to get that. But we are a republic. I feel that it's, it's important that we return this country back to a republic. You know, it's, it's not really run as a republic anymore. It's more like a democracy the way it's been run. We really need to focus on getting it back to the way it is supposed to be. Corey's kind of right. I don't think that we can actually vote our way back to a republic, a constitutional republic. I just don't see how that's ever going to happen. You know, it's, it's more likely we're going to have to burn the place down and build it back up. Now, that's not to say that, you know, I believe in chaos and anarchy and all that. 
I just think that Corey's right. There's too many institutions, too many people's ways of thinking that are just ingrained in the system. And you're never going to be able to gradually change it back the other way. We're at it, we've, we've passed the tipping point. You know, they try to say we're not quite there, but we're, we're there. Because the tipping point being, once you get 50% of the people voting themselves a free lunch, <laughs> it's over. Well, I know we're right there statistically. They say, oh, we're at 47 to 49%, depending on which numbers you look at. But when you think about the fact that, okay, of those numbers, you're at 47%, but think about the 5 to 10% of people that just don't care, and they won't vote no matter what. I, I think that uh, burning it down is the only way to go. But like Pete was saying in his video, you got to start with something, and I think, uh, is it Peter or was it Corey? I get confused now. You got to have a, something to start with. And I think the original Constitution is pretty good. I think it, uh, it left some vaguenesses out there that uh, obviously the Supreme Court can't deal with. The fact that the Supreme Court even tries to interpret the Constitution is a crime in itself because nowhere in the Constitution does it say they have the right to interpret the Constitution. All they have the ability to do is rule on the Constitution, the constitutionality of a law. Does it fit the verbiage of the Constitution or not? They start interpreting the Constitution, well, this is what we think the Constitution means. We think this amendment means that. You know, it is what it is. The words are there. It's not until you get this political correctness involved that you start changing the meaning of words. I think the Constitution and the Bill of Rights is a good place to start. And then you hold a convention to decide, well, what additional things do we want to put back in here? What things do we feel are missing? What amendments did we do after that? Especially all the amendments from the 1860s on. Really need to revisit a lot of those. Of course, women and blacks will have the right to vote. Come on, people, seriously. I know I'm going to get those comments. Oh, so you want to take away the right to vote for women and take away the rights of blacks. It's like, seriously, all men are created equal. Oh, I swear, people. But yeah, there's definitely things that need to change. We need to go back to where the representatives are actually elected by the people. And if that means we need to expand the size of the capital, we need to do it. Because right now you have each representative, like in California, 37 million people live in California. We have 53 representatives. That's something like 720 odd thousand people per representative. No one person, man or woman, can represent 720,000 people. They just can't do it. You're never going to get 720,000 people in a geographic area to ever be happy. And so it becomes this well, it's 50 plus one, you know, it becomes a democracy thing where the mob rules two lions arguing with a sheep for what's for dinner. It needs to go back to the Constitution and that number of people represented needs to be reduced way down and if that means we end up with a couple thousand representatives in the House, you know what? There's your stimulus right there. You're building on to the Capitol. Now when it comes to the Senators, I think we need to go back to the Constitutional way, which is the Senate is appointed by the state legislature. Why? Because that means that the state legislature, you pay more attention to how each state is created, and it, it keeps the state sovereign. It keeps the states thinking about their interests in Washington, not electing these people like Boxer and Feinstein, who end up going off to Congress, and all they're doing is working on national politics. They're not working on anything for the state. All they're doing is destroying our states back here with the things they pass at the, pass at the federal level. You have to have the representatives of the people, that's the U.S. House of Representatives, but then you have to have representation for the state itself. The people in each state will elect their state legislatures. I bet you'll pay a lot more attention to your state legislator. How many people even know who their state legislator is? It's almost like they're insignificant, except for screwing you over more and more with your state laws. But I digress. You go back to where the state legislatures elect the senators, because then the states will put elect people in there who will represent the state's interests at heart. And they don't care about federal centralized government. They're going to make sure they're not allowing the federal government to gain too much power. They're going to make sure that the laws will protect the sovereignty of the states. This idea to make it so that it was popular election by the Senate was just another way to take power away from the states and turn it over to the federal government, the centralized government. It's got to stop. we got to go back. So, anyway, I think I rambled on about that enough, but you kind of get the idea of where my mind's been lately. 
I know a lot of you really liked the uh, the thoughts for the weekend and really appreciated that. I understand. You know, I saw that article this last week about how more and more, like 40-something percent of the people get most of their news from YouTube. <laughs> and that's kind of shocking because there's a lot of people on YouTube that are just blowing you-know-what out there, you-know-where. I, I look at uh, YouTube as, as a way to help share information, whether good or bad. It's a way to share information. And that's one thing that the founders really believed in was debate, open debate amongst the citizenry. And I think that's what we have on YouTube. I think it's a it's a good forum for that. And so what I'm getting at is I'm not sure how much longer my channel is going to be open. I'm probably going to leave it up, leave the videos, and probably post videos every now and again. But I'm going to end up uh, probably creating a new channel with a new purpose, focused a lot more on somewhat produced kind of videos, not just me in front of a camera rambling like I am now. It'll be more... Uh, polished, produced type videos. Hopefully, I think you know what I'm talking about. You know, where it'll be more uh, visual and thought-provoking than just me sitting here rambling in front of a camera. I know a lot of you will appreciate that, I'm sure, a lot more. Quiet Modoc. Also, it's just, you know, I think it's good to change and do new things, try new things every once in a while. You get stuck in a rut and you do the same thing over and over. You just, you become some, some internet hack out there, like a, an Alex Jones or something, where you just you're doing the same old tired thing, you're just screaming into the camera, yelling the same things over and over and over. And, you know, I guess some people need that. They need to have that in their life. You know, we all go through phases, we watch that stuff for a while, but hopefully you move on. You know, if you're one of these people who's like, oh, I've, I've been following Alex for, like, you know, ten years, and oh my gosh, he's so awesome. It's like, whatever. Get a life, move along. You, you gotta change things up, you gotta look for new information, new people, new ideas, new thoughts. And, uh, you know, it's, I want to do that. I want to move, move a little bit different. I don't have a name for the channel yet. I'll let you know. I'll probably end up doing a, uh, a subscriber appreciation giveaway when I start the channel. It'll be on this channel, of course. And as an appreciation for all of my subs here. Also to highlight the new channel and kind of get some, let you know where it is and, you know, what kind of information is going to be there. Hopefully I get a couple videos produced for it first uh, before I do that. So... Fingers crossed I'll have time and I can get that done here in the next, you know, three to four weeks. I just want to let you know that, yeah, there, there, there's not going to be any thoughts for the weekend anymore. Of course, I'm always going to have thoughts on the weekend, and you should have thoughts on your weekend, too. But, uh, you know, maybe somebody else can pick up the mantle and carry on from here if they want. I don't know, whatever happened to Prepping News, he disappeared shortly after I started up. You know, there's other channels out there that we're doing a somewhat, you know, daily or weekly news, and it's good. Someone... New needs to take it up and get a new face in there, a fresh perspective. You know, I was doing the, the PNN, the Preppers News Network, weekly report as well. And um, the one I put out this week will be the last one that I'm doing. You know, I've already um, talked to Mark about it, that uh, I was going to be not producing that anymore as well. Uh, there's, I think, some other people that uh, have an interest in carrying that forward. So we'll, we'll turn it over to them. Anyway, so that's the update on, on what I've been doing, where I've been, what I'm going to be working on, and what I'm not going to be doing anymore. So, just wanted to thank everybody out there uh, for your support all this time. For all the guys that uh, I've been friends with for quite some time since I started on here. You know, I want to thank all them, especially, you know, the guys like, um, you know, Minbound. You've been there, brother. We talk all the time. Also, Kyle Prepper, as I'll say, because I work with the guy, you know. <laughs> Can't leave him out. I would leave him out, but you know, you always forget the one that's closest to you, right? Um, yeah, but all the guys, Coke Man, Fubar, ECP, uh, US Freedom 22, Pop Prepper, uh, who am I going to forget? Uh, Brooklyn, uh, Star Lordish, uh, Mr. Toe Tagger. Oh, wow. I'm going to forget a bunch of people here probably if I start going on this. Yeah, Low Buck, all you guys. Um, Low Buck gave him a first shout out. Of course, he jumped the gun. He was supposed to wait. But, you know, low buck's low buck. He just can't wait to help a guy out. He's a good guy that way. And I appreciate that low buck. So. But, yeah, there's been a lot of people, a lot of people I've met over the my time on this channel. And hopefully it will continue on in the future. I just want to let you know that's what's going on. And so whatever rumors are out there about me leaving to go run the CIA or uh, the Obama re-election campaign, um, there's not too much truth in that. So... Appreciate it again, once of all. I'll end this ramble with that, and want you all to, uh, you know, keep looking for information, keep, keep prepping, doing what you do. You know, things are going to get rough here in the next year, six months to a year. So you have to be ready for that. Um, you're not going to find a lot of answers from a lot of people. You'll find a lot of suggestions, a lot of thoughts. 
hopefully you can form your own uh, ideas and opinions and just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward towards freedom, liberty, and independence for yourself, self-sufficiency. You're going to be okay. So that's all I've got. Appreciate it. Everybody take care. SOS out.